Hello, I'm Dr. Vanita Rattan. This channel is dedicated to skin of colour. So today we're going to be reviewing Murad. So I've been asked so many times to do this particular video. I know it's a very popular brand in the UK and the Western world. Um, but what I wanted to do really today was to break down their best sellers into the key ingredients and whether or not I think it's suitable for skin of colour. If that sounds good to you, please give me a thumbs up. Okay, so starting off with their number one bestseller, which is the Retinol Youth Serum. Okay, so starting off with vitamin A. As a source of vitamin A, retinol is not ideal for skin of colour. It can be very irritating to our skin and any form of irritation can lead to inflammation, which can equal pigmentation in skin of colour. And this is a thing that we're trying to avoid. So they haven't actually written down what percentage of retinol that they're using. However, it says that the seventh ingredient is retinol propionate and the eighth ingredient is retinol, which means it's probably at about 3%, um, roughly speaking, when you're looking at the ingredients. Basically, the ingredients goes down in concentration as you go down the list. Now, this concentration of retinol, if it was at about 3%, is far too high. I would actually say even 1% is too high for skin of colour. I would opt for retinaldehyde as opposed to retinol, which is a far superior vitamin A for skin of colour, is 20 times as effective but with zero side effects. I would always look for a retinaldehyde as your key star vitamin A ingredient um, when you're purchasing your serums. In addition in this product, they decided to add fragrance and colouring, both of which are really not a good idea for skin of colour. So if you've watched any of my other videos, you will know all about fragrance. Fragrance can lead to contact dermatitis. In fact, it's the number one cause of contact dermatitis. So you know, when you're first applying it, you could be fine. And then over a period of time, you become sensitized to it and later you can actually become allergic to it. So fragrance is not your friend. Unfortunately, it's found in 90% of the products that I've seen, that I've reviewed and that are on the shelves. I do think they are going to slowly come out of fashion because I think consumers are becoming much more educated. The fact that you're sitting here watching this review means you want to know what is going on your skin and you want the best for your skin and ultimately this will eventually hopefully pan out on the shelves when you go shopping but for now it's just a good idea to avoid any product with fragrance in it. So if it wasn't clear retinol youth serum is not my favorite product and I wouldn't recommend it for skin of color. So the next product is Essential Sea Day Moisturiser and I'm going to flat out say I do not like this product at all. It is a chemical sunscreen and the two uh, key ingredients are octinoxate which is basically only a UVB sunscreen so it doesn't protect you from UVA and it's got oxybenzone which can cause skin allergy and is also hazardous to coral reefs. I actually believe you're not even allowed to apply this in Hawaii, actually. Um, I'm generally not a fan of chemical anyway. If you watch any of my other videos, especially have a look at my physical versus chemical sunblock video comparing the two. But if you have any form of pigmentation, you want to opt for a physical sunscreen. That's with zinc oxide, titanium dioxide. I would avoid chemical sunscreens. Um, the reason being that the bond is basically broken from UV and it releases thermal energy on your skin. And as you know, any form of energy can lead to pigmentation that is visible light. It can be infrared, so heating. So when you're cooking, for example, that can also stimulate your melanocytes um, and obviously UV as well. So for that reason, I would avoid chemical. But in addition, they thought it would be a good idea to add a vitamin A derivative. So they added retinol palmitate. Why would you add retinol palmitate to a cream that you're meant to apply during the day? It just doesn't make any sense, to be honest, because 
that itself is quite unstable. You tend to wear your vitamin A's at night for this reason. Um, so again, I, that's just another reason I don't like it. And then just to top it off as a cherry on the cake, they decided to add fragrance and they added lemonine and linalool. So often when you look at the back of packaging, it won't say fragrance. Sometimes it will say fragrance and perfume, but often it will give you a funny name like linalool or lemonine, which is a name of a fragrance, but you might not necessarily know that. And so I feel like you're being duped a little bit um buy that so that's also my aim with these videos is to break down the ingredients list so you know exactly what you're putting on your skin so i'm not a fan of the essential c day moisturizer i would tell you to save your money and if you're looking for a moisturizer during the day don't buy one with actives in it you want a pure emollient something like cerave or cetraben something that's fatty that's going to hydrate the skin that's got um, humectants in it which basically holds water in your skin in your epidermis but doesn't irritate the skin so you don't want fragrance you don't want any actives like vitamin a um, I personally don't use any actives at all for any of my patients at the hyperpigmentation clinic um, during the day I always tell them to wear something like cetraban plus sunblock during the day and at night time the actives that we give them so I'm, I basically specialize in treating pigmentation in skin of color. Um, and I've got four clinics in the UK. You can follow us on Instagram at the hyperpigmentation clinic. We've done 30,000 cases of pigmentation in skin of color with a 95% success rate. And this year we're gonna start training doctors globally on how to treat dark circles, so periorbital pigmentation and pigmentation on the face and body. So it's a very exciting year ahead. But um, actually, this is where my knowledge comes from, is because I specialize in treating skin of color, I know the percentages that we can tolerate for the different ingredients. Okay, so one of the next best sellers is Invisi Scar. This is actually not a bad ingredient, um, bad product, sorry. The first ingredient that they have is dimethicone, which is a very good ingredient. It's an occlusive. So basically, say you cut yourself, it basically occludes and it allows your skin to hydrate. Um, because it prevents any water loss from taking place and that's essential for um, scar healing. The antioxidant it's got in it is ascorbic acid um, that's a very good vitamin C um, however if you've watched my other videos you will know that antioxidants work much better in combination so if I, I'm a chemical formulator as well so if I was formulating this product I would have put in green tea extract which is soothing and is also an antioxidant um, along with the vitamin C uh, the ascorbic acid um, that's my only feedback on that they've also added salicylic acid which is very good because it's an anti-inflammatory especially at less than two percent remember more than two percent it's a keratolytic less than two percent it's an anti-inflammatory um, the only downside i would say is why did they add fragrance because now you've got skin that's trying to repair itself it's a wound and you're adding an irritant to the situation I mean, it just doesn't, honestly, it just doesn't make sense. It's, it's pandering to consumer demand, thinking you're going to sell more product. But actually, it's not, not only is it not doing anything for your skin, it's actually quite harmful to your skin. So in all, I wouldn't use this product and I wouldn't, um, you know, recommend it however if they just took the fragrance out it would have been a fantastic product murad if you're listening please remove your fragrance and i will make a positive video review for you because actually the formulations are very good it's just removing the fragrance okay moving on to the next best seller which is their rapid age spot correcting serum i've heard a lot of good things about this product um so the ninth thing the fifth ingredient sorry is niacinamide niacinamide basically stops the transfer of melanosomes from the keratinocyte where it's actually made um and stops it from getting into the skin cells around it so that that stopping of that transfer means that you see less pigmentation on the surface so it's a very good ingredient very rarely do people react badly to niacinamide um, and it has many many benefits including that that it helps with reduce with hyperpigmentation 
The ninth ingredient is hexyl resorcinol, which is an antioxidant. It's a very good antioxidant. It does have some skin brightening properties as well. So I like that ingredient. The 10th ingredient is a school bar glucoside, which is also basically vitamin C. So it has skin brightening properties and is an antioxidant. The 11th ingredient is hexapeptide, which also has skin brightening properties as well. So I like that ingredient. The only downside I would say is, can you guess? Yes, it has fragrance in it. Um, and with people who have pigmentation, it tends to happen in skin of color because our melanocytes are large. That's where those are the cells that produce the pigment melanin. They're large, they are easily triggered. That's why when we have one scratch, one bite, one burn, we pigment. And this means we can't really afford to put irritants on our skin that's gonna to lead to inflammation because inflammation leads to pigmentation. In all the products, I would say you would wanna avoid fragrance in the pigmentation product and in your sun block, especially if you're using it on people who have skin of color and who have melasma. So their next bestseller is their Night Fix Enzyme. Now, um, it's divide, I'm gonna divide this into two. So the good points and then the bad points. So I start off with the good points. It's got a very good antioxidant called Hematococcus pluvialis. It's also got niacinamide, so we've discussed niacinamide and how it works when it comes to pigmentation, but it's also got other benefits. So it, it helps to reduce pore size, it helps to regulate sebum, it's great for acne, um, it's great for erythema or redness of the skin, great for texture. So niacinamide is one of those ingredients that really wants to be in all your skincare. If you watch my niacinamide video, I'll go through the best niacinamides for skin of color, but we're going a bit off topic. Um, so it's also got um, chlorella vulgaris in it, which is a moisturizer and a soother. So that's also a very good ingredient. The downside is it has five different fragrances. Five. Um, and if you were to look at the marketing on the website, I mean, I had, to, I had to delve into this one and it said, it the smells are soothing for your mind, but what about trauma to the skin? Um, I'm all for aromatherapy, you know, burn whatever oils you want to soothe your mind and, and feel the comfort, but I wouldn't apply it to my face. So I have no idea what they were thinking. I mean, they've actually added even uh, Gerenial they've added, which is one of the most irritating forms of fragrance. I just don't get it. I really don't get it. I mean, it could have been a great product. Moving on to the next product, which is their hydrating toner. Can you guess how what I'm feeling? It's another product I really don't like. So the third ingredient here is Witch Hazel. Witch hazel, basically it's got tannins in it and tannins are what leads to that drying effect on the skin. However, tannins are also, also compressed proteins in the skin and can lead to sensitization. In addition, witch hazel is basically distilled with denatured alcohol, which actually ends up in the product itself. And denatured alcohol is one of the worst ingredients you can have on your skin because it basically leads to free radicals it literally damages the skin that's how it works it opens up the skin and rams the ingredients into your skin but you're ending up causing more trauma and inflammation to the skin than than the ingredients that you're trying to put into the skin so it's not a good idea in addition if that wasn't enough they went and added four different fragrances, including Gerenial, Linalool, and Citronelle. So, I mean, so now you've basically opened up the skin, damaged the skin, and now you're going to apply the number one cause of contact dermatitis on the skin. I mean, why? Just avoid completely. And moving on to the last product, which is their sunblock, which is called City Skin Broad Spectrum SPF 50. I got quite excited with this product because it had zinc oxide, titanium dioxide. I thought, great, finally, they've got a great physical sunblock that I can say something positive about because actually 
I don't really like saying anything negative. I'd rather give you positive products that you can purchase and that are good for your skin. Um, and it's even got uh, cyclopentasiloxane in it too, which is a silicone, which basically means that the product will um, spread much more evenly across the skin. It gives a luxurious feel to the skin, so it's a great ingredient. However, they went and added retinol palmitate, which is a vitamin A derivative, which again, I have no idea why they applied this during the day. I mean, if they wanted, if they desperately wanted an antioxidant, I would say, you know, maybe vitamin C, but even then I wouldn't say vitamin C, maybe green tea extract because you're likely to get, unlikely to get any irritation or thermal energy from that ingredient. But ultimately, I would always say actually avoid any actives during the day, let alone vitamin A. Other than that point, uh, this would be my favourite product from the Murad range. Um, I'm really sorry. I feel like people are going to write down in the comment section below that I'm really mean. And I really don't want to bash and I don't want to, to bring brands, brands down and say anything negative. But there are just basic tweaks that they can make to their products that will make it friendly for skin of colour and friendly for sensitive skin. Because with these products, you can wear them for a long time and actually you'll be fine. But suddenly one day your skin will not agree. Suddenly one day your skin will become inflamed, it will break out, and you're going to be sensitised to other ingredients in that product. And then at that point you'll think, but I've been wearing this product for ages, why suddenly am I reacting to it? And this is the reason. So I hope more of these videos get made on fragrance and skincare and I hope the big brands are watching these videos and create fragrance free lines that are actually fragrance free um, for our skin to be honest. I hope you found today helpful. Um, please can you write down in the comment section below what else you want me to review. And don't forget to download your free insider guide for skincare for skin of colour. Spend a lot of time on it. Um, and if there's any other videos you want me to make, please write them down below and you know I will make them for you. Thank you very much.